Today's show, we have some investors looking to take care of their special needs daughter, and they're going to utilize real estate investment to do that, right? They're going to set up a trust for her so that they can ensure uh, she is taken care of financially for the rest of their lives, and I'm going to help them do that. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. James Wise here. Today, we are working with Sandy and Chris from Palm Beach, Florida. Now, Sandy and Chris... They got a little bit different scenario than a lot of you greedy sons of bitches out there, right? A lot of you greedy, filth bag, capitalistic assholes just want to get rich. Don't worry, I respect that. If anybody loves a dollar, it's your boy Jay Wives, right? But Sandy and Chris, they're a special couple. They have, uh, I don't know if I want to say more honorable, because, hey, we all got reasons for making our money, right? Uh, like a lot of people would consider me to be a... Rich asshole, but hey, man, I got a family to feed to, okay? I got a bunch of kids I got to take care of, and you know what? Just like uh, everybody else, my kids, they got issues too, right? So we all have reasons for making our money, right? But Sandy and Chris is, is uh, definitely a very honorable one. Their daughter has special needs, okay? And they want to create a trust, right? So they're not trying to live the high life. They're not like some of you young guns out there that want to get a freaking $150,000 SUV so you can cruise around and pick up hot chicks, okay? No, they want to take care of their child, which, by the way, if you're a young gun out there and you're watching the show right now and you're like, dude, I totally want to get a $150,000 SUV so I could pick up a ton of chicks, don't think that I'm not here for you, bro. I'm totally here for you. We will hook you up as well. Click the show notes below to book a free call on my team. But today, it's about you, Sandy. It's about you, Chris, and it's about your daughter. And you had reached out to me. You guys are interested in doing some like B or C multifamily stuff, interested in Section 8. That's great. That's what probably I would say the majority of the people that watch my show and invest in the Cleveland market gravitate towards. A lot of people really like, like I would say the most popular thing is like duplexes in the C grade area where we're paying around right now in today's market, like 100K for like 1600 in rent. And we got you know, a mix, mostly Section 8 tenants, some cash bank tenants, some of the lower income stuff, okay? But here's the deal. That type of investing, it's not perfect. There's no perfect investment. That type of investing, it does make a lot of money. I've made the majority of my money with that stuff. But for you guys, I don't think return on investment is what I would focus on. I think return of investment is the most popular thing, right? So I would be remiss if I didn't for you guys present you something as far down on the risk scale as I possibly can. The numbers on the investment I'm going to show you guys today – is not as sexy as what you're used to seeing from me, okay? But here's the issue. When you get into that multifamily stuff, you're going to have really good runs and then really bad runs, and really good and really bad, right? Like you watch that Tennis from Hell show. When stuff goes awry on these investment properties, it goes awry, and it's like a problem, right? You got to deal with it, right? You got Billy Bob, heroin addict, living in a property. He ODs. He's dead. Now we got to move his dead carcass out of the unit and re-rent it and you got people not paying rent, people doing this, people doing that, right? Like, guys, where do you think we get the content from the Tennis from Hell show, okay? And for the most part, it's no big deal. I factor that kind of stuff into your analysis, and you got to roll with the punches, guys. That's my thing, right? That's my whole mission in life is to give you guys a truthful understanding of what real estate investing is really like, right? You have a whole bunch of uh, C-grade rentals, a lot of Section 8 rentals, right? You're going to deal with a whole lot of fucking assholes, okay? There's a lot of fucking assholes out there renting C-grade rentals. That's the name of the game. You're renting a lot of property to a lot of shitheads, all right? Does it make you a lot of money? Oh, yeah. I've made a lot of freaking money doing it. But that doesn't mean... I ain't going gray. It doesn't mean I ain't losing my hair. You know what I'm saying? It can feel like a battle. And that is my number one objective with Holton Wise TV. That's to allow you guys truthful insight into that battle. So with that said, I really looked at your situation. I'm like, dude, 
They're trying to build a trust for a special needs child. They need to go extra cautious. And if you guys want more higher risk stuff than this to try to get a higher return on investment over the course of your next few videos, we absolutely can. But I really wanted to come to you with your first video and set you up with something that I feel very much can be a set it and forget it. Something that could be totally on autopilot and then if need be down the road be something that's very, very easy to sell, right? Something you can sell to both owner occupants or rental property investors because folks, the market where this one is, owner occupants drive the prices and they drive them higher up than areas where it's only investors, right? So I feel like going with something this low key is probably right right where you two need to be, even if you don't think so right now. Take it from somebody who's had thousands of tenants and dealt with every kind of investment you possibly can. For you, your situation, I think this is what's gonna hit the nail on the head. Man, I hate those other real estate gurus out there. Those real estate gurus that lead you guys to believe fairy tales, lead you guys to believe in magic, lead you guys to think that there's gonna be genies granting your wishes if you buy their course or their program. Like there's gonna be hot girls in bikinis just popping out. That's not the real life of a real estate investor. And here on Holton Wise TV, we give it to you straight. Welcome back. Let's pull up the property, right? So this one, folks, this one is not as sexy as what I think a lot of people uh, typically go to the Cleveland market to find, right? They're looking for crazy cash on cash returns. This one is not going to give that to you. You're not going to get like, oh my God, the numbers. You're not going to get crazy on the numbers, okay? But this one is a safe, solid investment. And sometimes, in my opinion, it's really important for investors to focus on return on or return of investment as opposed to just return on investment, right? I feel like a lot of people get blinded by great cash flow returns and then they're buying properties that are a little higher risk uh, than maybe they have the stomach for, right? Like me personally, I have a diverse portfolio, right? I got some nice stuff like this, but I also have a ton of Section 8, okay? But I'm a full-time investor. I have a full-time business. I have a huge staff. I got 60 people working for me. I've sold over $200 million worth of real estate. I have over 1,200 separate income streams coming Coming into my life, right? And I tell you that because you need to understand if you're going to only have a few income streams, right? You got your W 2 job and then you got a rental here, rental there. You're trying to get these income streams going. At the very beginning, I think you're better served if you're getting lower risk stuff, right? Because here's the deal. When I have a tenant, and right, you guys can watch the Tenants from Hell show. You see that all the time, right? We're very upfront about the fact that, yo, sometimes there's problems with these investments. If I got a tenant in like one or two or three or five of my rental properties, that they're just jerk offs. They're not paying rent. They're damaging the property. They're ODing on heroin. And we got to fucking throw their dead ass out and then re-rent the unit. There's all kinds of BS that comes along with being a rental property investor, right? But I got 1,200 plus streams of income coming in, folks. I just move through it. I plow through it. It's a blip. Doesn't affect me, right? Doesn't matter to me. But if you only have a couple income streams, those ups and downs and ups and downs, that could really sway things, right? So I want you guys to look at stuff like this as well. Numbers are going to not look as great, but this is one that your, your risk of having issues is super low, right? This is just a freshly renovated property in a B-grade area, right? And they've done this thing very, very well, right? This is super nice, okay? And this is a neighborhood where the two types of buyers are going to be landlords like you, but also you're going to get a lot of first-time home buyers uh, in this neighborhood, right? This is Parma, Ohio, largest suburb in the Cleveland market. I grade this as a B-grade area, very, very safe, stable investment. Now, the address, 3327 Hearststone Road, Parma. It's been on the market 44 days, but that is a bit of a... Uh, it hasn't really, right? It was on the market, then immediately sold, right? Went under contract. But because you're dealing with a lot of first-time home buyers, a lot of owner occupants in this neighborhood, what happened is this was somebody who already owned one home and then they wanted to upgrade, move their family to the nicer home. So they did what's called a house sale concurrency. That's where a buyer will submit an offer to a seller and be like, yo, my offer's contingent on the normal stuff, appraisal, financing, inspection. But in addition, it's contingent on me selling my old house because I can't afford two mortgages at once, right? So the seller 
accepted that offer, but the buyer ran into issues selling their old house, right? Because that's the thing with these concurrencies, right? They're, I don't, I would never accept an offer with a home sale concurrency, right? Because not only do you have all the contingencies on your own deal, you have to make sure the buyer on your own deal gets all their stuff squared away. You have a complete third separate deal, third party deal. You got another buyer, their agent, and getting all their stuff with their lender and their appraisal and their inspection all squared away. It's a whole mess. And what if that person then has a home sale concurrency as well? You're down this like crazy like rabbit trail. It's a whole mess, right? So what ended up happening is it wasn't going through fast enough. The seller bailed, and he's like, yo. Get your stuff together. I got a I got a bounce, right? So now it's back on the market again, and I think an investor offer like yours would be very attractive, right? Because investors, we got a bunch of money. We don't have to do home sale concurrencies. So I think we got a shot at picking it up for a little bit less, right? Because as nice as it is, I don't think you could pay 180 and make cash flow. But I'd like to try to pick it up for you at 150. We pick it up at 150. We put a ten in there for about 12.99, right? It's a three two, beautifully done, right? So 12.99 comes in. After all said and done, fixed variable expense estimates, I think we'll be bringing home a little bit over seven grand. Now, 150k is the cost, but you only put down 37 and a half. Bank kicks in 112 and a half. It's a five cap or a four and a half percent return on investment. But that is a misleading number, right? Just like sometimes it could be misleading going the other way, right? You get these cash on cash returns. And you got to understand, folks, we have factored in some things over the course of ownership, over 30 years, right? Go back to the chart here. Look, you got your capital expenditures. That's 779.40, okay? And this is a double-edged sword. This is going to cut both ways. That doesn't mean every single year you're spending 779.40 on capital expenditures. No. What that means is over the average course of ownership, I anticipate – you spending seven seventy nine a year on average, right? So that's things like your furnace, your roof, your hot water tank. Okay, so you take a furnace, about three grand. It's gonna last you about thirty years. This one's new, right? So that's seven seventy nine. You're not spending any of that money towards a furnace for probably thirty friggin' years. You'll probably sell it before you replace it, right? So it's not like that seven seventy nine is getting spent. That's coming back to you in addition to your NOI, but I don't allow you to consider it in your brain to think about it as NOI because eventually you'll need a furnace. Same thing with your roof. They last about 30 years. You're looking at like 8K, right? But it's a brand new roof. You don't got to mess with it, right? Your vacancy and non-payment, I average that out for you, 779, right? You might have a tenant who lives in the house for 10 years, right? That's the thing. When you buy nicer assets like this, Assets where people are driven to rent in this area because they like the school system. They don't want to put their kids in the Cleveland School District, so they move them to Parma. They don't want to move because they don't want to change their kids' school. Think about that. There's 15 schools in the city of Parma, right? That's how you get longer tenancy. So that's 779, right? If they live there for 10 years, that's another seven grand on top of that profit, right? So if your tenants are getting evicted, all that stuff, that's an issue. And then that's just your repairs and your maintenance as well. That's 779 for that. The majority of your repairs and maintenance are going to be on older mechanicals. This one doesn't have those. And they're going to be when tenants are moving out and you have to do like a $5,000 turnover, $6,000 turnover, $7,000 turnover, things of that nature, right? So sometimes these numbers can be misleading. In my opinion, a property like this is going to run the best chance uh, at being a very stable investment for you, not something that's got really good years, really bad years, really good years, really bad years, right? This is like the perfect low-key investment where you can truly set it and forget it. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.